everyone in this video i would like to show you a brief tutorial on how to use xgboost in r this means that we'll just do the very basic steps in order to get our data set and then apply to it xgboost and then we'll skip all the other regular steps that we would usually take like splitting the data set into a training and a test set, doing some hyperparameter tuning, assessing our accuracy. If you are interested in XGBoost, I have a course about it on Udemy, so please be sure to check out the link in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is to get the data set. So as a comment, we need to go and do load the data set. It's always a very good practice to comment everything, even the very basic commands. Now, we need to get a particular library because our data set is within a library. So install packages, and then inside we go and do model data. I already have it, so I'm gonna leave this one as a comment and I'm just going to do the command library to retrieve it. So model and then data. Here we go, control enter. And now yes, to get the data set. So here we go. And we're going to do the stack overflow. So here we go, control enter again. And now let's have a look. Now, what is this data set about? It's about remote work. So in this data set, we have whether someone is working remotely or not. And then we have a lot of characteristics. So whether someone is a data scientist, uh, whether they do it as a hobby, open source, uh, how many years, the company size, I think there is as well the salary somewhere. Here we go in the very first one, as well the country, and you know, a lot of characteristics. And the idea is that, okay, let's use XGBoost and we could have done many different things. So we could have created a model that would have helped us understand whether we are good at distinguishing between the people who work remotely and the people that do not. But what we're going to do is that we'll use the explanatory power behind the SHAP values and we'll see what correlates most with people that work remotely versus the people that do not. So let's not waste again any more time and let's get started. As a comment, we want to isolate X and Y. And what you need to do. So I want to get this library, which is called Deplier. And if you don't have it, please do install packages and then Deplier. I already have it. So I'm just going to use that command a library in order to retrieve the player. So here we go and control enter. Now for to get our Y, this is actually quite, quite simple. So Y arrow. And then what we are going to do is that we're going to do as dot numeric. And then we go to our stack overflow. And we do then a dollar sign. And then we just get here the remote. So here we go, control enter. And now what we see here is that our Y is just ones and twos. So if I select it and run it, it's just ones and twos. And what we want in the end, because this is a classification problem, we want everything in the form of zeros and ones. Now, one very easy way to get this done is just to do minus one. So here we go. And now you can see here on the right, it's zeros and ones. Now to get the X, so these are the predictors. One very simple way, and this is why we're going to use the player. We're going to use a function there that will allow us to select everything but the remote variable. However, um, whereas before we we're using this data set and then dollar sign, the player has a particular way of being written. You go and you do stack overflow. And then usually we have the dollar sign, but in the player we have the pipe, which is the percent bigger and percent. 
And afterwards, now you start with the function. And for us, what we want to do is to select everything but. So we use the function select. And now when you want to subtract something from your data set, you use minus and you just put here minus remote. And this is actually absolutely it. Next, if I am to do now str, because I want to have a look at the data structure of my x. And let's have a look. So here we go. I can see that here it's a lot of numerics. And as well, we have here some factors. Now, you need to remember that XGBoost does not deal with factors. So every single factor that we have, it needs to be transformed into a dummy variable. And that is exactly what we are going to do now. So as a common transform factor into dummy variable. And how we're going to do this, we're going to use another library for this, which is the library fast dummies. So again, install packages for those who don't have it. And then we do fast dummies. Now again, I already have it. So again, leave this one as a comment. And now I just use library, and then open parenthesis fast dummies, control enter. And here we go. Now, we go to our x because I still want to, it to be called x. So I'm just going to transform upon it. And then I use the function dummy underscore calls. And what do I need to include inside? Let me just do briefly F1 and ask for help. Let me increase the size. So fast creation of dummy variables. And here is what we can include. And there is just one thing that's absolutely mandatory, which is the data, which for us is the X. And then I also like to use the remove first dummy or remove most frequent dummy. Because remember, when you transform or when you use dummy variables, you need to omit at least one to not fall within the dummy variable trap. And with this, you actually already have it included. So you don't need to worry about it. Let me do control enter again. So here we go. And let's have a look at our x. And here we go at the very end, we see country United States, United Kingdom, India, Germany. But there is one thing which is an issue, which is we have here still uh, the country so the factor. So again, we need to remove this country because it's actually something which the library itself, I think, should take care of, is that to just remove the factor and then just include the dummy variables. But unfortunately, it does not. So what we are going to do is that we are going to copy paste this from above and we're going to make the change so we're not in Stack Overflow, but rather in X. And instead of remote, we want to remove country. And here we go. Actually, I forgot to include here the X. Now this should work itself out. And here we go. So we have our X, let's click again, and the country was removed. Next, there is one last thing that I need to do, which is to set the parameters. And we'll just do the parameters that will tell XGBoost that we are doing a classification problem. So we'll call it params and then arrow. And the way to set the parameters is that we create a list. Now, there's just three things that I'd like us to include. So the first one is set.seed. And this is so that when you look at the results, they are similar to mine. And 1502, as that is my date of birth. Now we do eval underscore metric. And here is the AUC, AUC or area under the curve. This is the metric that is used in order to evaluate classification problems. And then next, we need to tell the objective. This is again to reinforce the logistics. So we need to tell what kind of dependent variable we have. And we do binary colon 
and then we do logistic. So here we go. Let's do control enter. And now, yes, now we do running XG boost. Well, now you can already imagine that we need a particular library. So install packages, open quote marks, and then you do XG boost. Again, I already have it. So I'm going to leave this one as a comment and use just a command library inside XG boost. And here we go. Now, what do we need to do? So we need to create something in which we'll store our model. So we'll call it model. So this is where it will be stored. And then we go and we use the function XG boost. Now, what do we need to include inside? So let's have a look and let's do F1. Let's also increase the size. So extreme gradient boosting training and XG boost is this one. So we definitely need data. And here you go. So data equals. Now, one particular thing is that we cannot just feed our data into XGBoost the way it is, but rather XGBoost requires that all the predictors are fed in the form of a matrix. So we just do as matrix and then we include X inside. Here we go. Next, we want as well a label. So this is our dependent variable. So label and this one equals our Y. Next, what we can include. So missing uh, doesn't matter. So weight doesn't matter. Params, yes, because we created this above. So params and then equals params. Next, comma, now if we are to have a look, so n round, so this is the number of times that we want XGBoost to be run. Remember that XGBoost is or has an ensemble mechanism that each model is created or is built upon the previous one. And this is where the continuous learning comes from. So n rounds, and this will be equal, let's just do 20, I think. That is enough. Now verbose equals one. Verbose is just for XGBoost to communicate with us and um, how it is doing. So whether it is running or not. If we continue to look at it, so print every end. So this will be just if we wanted it to print at the 10th, the 20th, but this is not needed. Um, early stopping rounds. This is when XGBoost, so it is continuously learning. And of course, at some point in time, there is no point. It doesn't learn any further. So this is more of an efficiency uh, mechanism because if you're running it for a thousand times, but after the 500th, it is no longer learning. You save the extra 500 and you just continue to the next one. So this would be it. And let's do control enter to run. Here you go. It was quite, quite fast. Again, now what we do with this, we could have, you know, try to assess the accuracy, but since we did not split the data set into a training and a test set, it doesn't particularly matter. And what we'll do is that we'll have a look at the SHAP values, just to have a look at the characteristics that correlate the most, the people that work remotely versus the one that do not. And there is one very simple function that we need to use. So XGB dot plot dot shap and inside so again let's ask for help and visualizing the shap feature contribution to prediction dependencies on feature value now sounds complicated but when we see the product that comes out of it it will be quite quite simple plenty of things here but do not worry you just need to use three which is the data the top n and the model so here we go and let's get started so data and again we go and do as matrix because we are still using the xgboost library and we include here the x comma and next so model model equals model and then finally top underscore n this is just how many we want there. So 
we'll just take for us the top five. We could have used, you know, top three. Usually top 10, there's some kind of issue, some kind of bug. So it doesn't allow us to do, but feel free to try. So here we go. And everything will appear here in the plots. We just need to wait. And here we go. So these are the top five. So the five most important drivers when it comes to or when it comes to predicting uh, whether someone is working remotely or not. Let's zoom in and see. And let me start by explaining what does this mean. So first and foremost, every single blue is a dot. It is an observation. In fact, everything that is above zero, it has a positive uh, contribution or increases the likelihood of someone working remotely. And everything that is below zero decreases the likelihood. And here you see, there's another thing that I like to highlight is that you can see here that for instance, in the first one, there's this curve. And as well on the fourth one, there's again a curve. And this is just new that XGBoost is actually really good at dealing with this non-linearity. So it will really fit a very good line uh, across the observations and the values of them. So you can clearly see how they develop. And if we are to look at first the desktop applications developer, here we see that basically if they are one, if so, if they are a developer of uh, apps, so this increases the likelihood. So these are people that usually work remotely. But for me, what I find most interesting here are actually the top two. So we have years coded. So the more years they have coded, the less likely they are to work remotely. And this is something that intuitively it does make sense because you can either form a family and of course you would need some kind of stability or as well, if you spend a lot of years in a the company, then you're also likely to eventually have your own team. And that usually makes you stay put. And then the last one, which is the salary. You can see here, this is more of a curve. And you can see here, and it is like the very big bulk where it is mostly blue. And we can see that if you earn a bit less, then you're more likely to work remotely. And if you earn a bit more, then you're less likely to work remotely. And again, this is something that intuitively it does make sense because I can imagine that there are a lot of companies that hire from lower income countries and especially in the tech industry, just so that they can save a bit more money. And of course, they still get the job done. This is it for this video. I hope that you found it interesting and insightful and that as well, you do have already the tools that will enable you to start applying XGBoost to the problem that you have at hand. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and as well, please do check out the other videos. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in another video. And as well, don't forget to check out the Udemy course. And until then, have fun. Thank you.